Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The Kansas City PD has a new chief of police. Rick Smith is a former major and 29-year veteran of the department who worked his way up through the ranks to become the 45th chief of police for KCMO. Chief Smith was chosen after a hiring process that included 42 applicants, three public forums, 10 interviews, and two finalists. Chief Smith has taken over for interim Chief David Zimmerman, who had held the position since Chief Daryl Forte's retirement in May. Last Tuesday, if you noticed a lot of Kansas City posers showing up in front of their favorite city buildings, that was for a good reason. It was an annual event and national competition called City Hall Selfie Day. On this day, residents from cities all over the U.S. strut their stuff and take selfies to tell the world just how proud they are of their own hometown. We had a great turnout this year in KC, and if you would like to see your friends' and neighbors' selfie efforts, check out their pics on our Twitter page. The City Planning and Development Department's Permit Center has moved out of City Hall temporarily to a building located at 4900 Swope Parkway to help facilitate a complete remodeling of the fifth floor here at City Hall. The goal is to improve the customer service experience for those folks who need access to permit services while at City Hall. There will be signs posted to help customers when they arrive at City Hall, and customers may experience longer than usual wait times for CPD permits during the first few days of this move. You can also access the Permit Center's online options at kcmo.gov planning. Construction is expected to last until mid-November. Now stay tuned for information from our other city departments. My name is Mark Alford. I'm the morning anchor for Fox 4 News, and I'm also the proud son-in-law of a Korean War veteran, Bill Atkins, who passed away 18 years ago. He was buried at Mount Moriah. And we thank you for being here today. No matter what your background is, uh, no matter your race, your economic, socioeconomic status, we are all Americans, right? And we are all here to honor the great men and women who have given so much so that we can be free. As we know, uh, Flag Day has now become uh, synonymous with the Korean War Memorial and here in the park. And we're glad to partner with the organization that's made this possible. And uh, thanks to the great leadership of Deborah Schultz and her team and our team that's here today, Melinda Minx, Heidi Downer, Carol Green, and uh, Jesse Frazier, are helping support today. And I think I saw over my shoulder uh, Lewis Cummings, who is our park district manager that uh, helps take care of this park. You're also going to hear today about some plans for the future. Um, as far as the uh, memorial is concerned, now John's going to unveil a great piece of art in front of us. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, Marcus Smith, who is here today representing Councilwoman uh, Heather Hall, and appreciate all the good work our city council has done to get us to this point, along with the Kansas Missouri Park Board. So, thanks again for coming today. Appreciate the opportunity to make a few comments, and enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you. What has transpired in the past years is we are losing our Korean War veterans at an alarming rate. The war itself ended. Think about this: July 1953. But that's 64 years ago. And our average veteran today is mid-80s into their 90s. If these women, men and women are to ever see this sculpture, we must move forward now in our fundraising and place this sculpture here in the park by the memorial. Well, thank you very much. Uh uh, I created a little maquette here to show you it, the idea of the sculpture. And it's really a, a thought about human survival and the gift of freedom that America has given to so many people of the world. What it is, it's a, um, it's a, it, it's a simple concept on the surface, but I wanted to show the, the real struggle that the Korean people had at the time. They really had no country. They perhaps had no trust. And really, what a great society they became. And so that's 
what I'm trying to get at, the bond between the Korean people, America, through the American soldier. Over the past few years, I have played golf at Ryder Golf Course at Fort Bragg after work at the end of the day, just to get some exercise. It's in the late afternoon when it's most beautiful, and retreat sounds at 5 p.m. And we golfers all stop playing and toward, turn toward our American flag that is waving in our mind's eye. As to the color of the Star Spangled Banner is played, we come to attention, uncover, and place our hands over our hearts, or salute. And these days I pray that God protects our servicemen and women in America, in Iraq, Afghanistan, and throughout the world, and are putting their lives on the line for our freedoms. Our flag is the most recognized flag in the world, no question. Those that died, those that became veterans that we recognize today, and our active duty personnel still in harm's way deserve the very best emblem that we can put forward. When that flag that you fly becomes too torn, too faded, and is unserviceable, replace it with a new fitting emblem for the land that we love. Crossroads Music Fest is coming up in a few weeks with over 40 performers and nine stages and it's supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Today we are at the Record Bar at 1520 Grand, which is one of the nine stages and we're here with the founder, Bill Sundahl, of the Crossroads Music Fest. Bill, thanks for taking time to talk to us oh, today about the fest. Now, what was it that made you decide to start the festival and why the Crossroads? Well, I started for very selfish reasons. I was in a band and wanted to put on a show where people would come see our band. And um, it really, the Crossroads is the natural part of the city. I mean, it started 13 years ago in 2005 and it, the art scene was just growing around here and it made perfect sense. We uh, started it right behind Grinders, where Crossroads is now. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the perfect time and perfect place to start something like this and it's really grown far away from my selfish endeavor to try and get people to see our band into um, a, a place to showcase regions artists every September. And how do you go about selecting the musicians and the performers that will that will participate? Well I go see a lot of live music mm -hmm. and I try to cover as many genres as possible and try and give people a real cross-section of what is going on every year in the region. Um, essentially, I try to curate a show so they don't have to do what I do and go see a bunch of bands and sit through things that they might not, you know, care so much about or whatever, but, but to try and bring the very best of, and, and again, it's really important to me to, to be diverse in that, that there's, females are represented and different styles of music, reggae, country, folk, bluegrass, rock and roll, you know, you name it, we've probably had some of it, hip hop and salsa and, you know, we try to cover as much ground as we can. That's great. So when you, when you're in the crossroads, you can go hop from a location to location. You could walk, but there's also transportation. Um, right. So yeah, there. Barley Bus is going to be running a loop. It's the first uh, year we've done that. So I'm very excited. So uh, thanks to Jake at Barley Bus for doing that. It's going to be really, so, but they're all within two and a half blocks of each other. We've never had any problems without transportation. It's just sort of an added thing that we're going to do this year to 
Well, good. And how, if a musician is wanting to participate next year, perhaps, mm -hmm. how would they go about doing that? Uh, they would go to cmfkc.com and just go to the contact page. And uh, it's got my email address. And uh, just send me your information, your EPK, and, and whatever you've got, some videos. And um, try and get me to come see your show, because I always like to see, you know, what we're getting. Sure. And in addition to the musical performances, you have other things that are happening that are even family friendly. Right. So yeah, this year we're having uh, pop-up shops at Josie Records. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so in the parking lot south of Josie Records, which is uh, just north of 19th and Oak. And, um, and then day parties as well. So those will all be um, free and family friendly. And so we'll have makers and sponsors booths and KKFI will have a booth. Um, and then just free music from 11 to 5, and then the festival starts on at 6. And those are plenty of all ages venues at the festival as well, because that's another thing that I've really grown very passionate about is getting young folks out to see music, to experience it, and you know, think of that as a career. Mm -hmm. We're also doing a mix master as a um, music conference that we're bringing to the festival this year. And so um, it's been going on for three years in Lawrence, and we're starting that at, uh, from 11 to 5 as well. So if you're a musician who's interested in furthering your career, it's a panel discussions, workshops, live performance pieces as well. That's great. So if you're, another way of getting in to, to kind of dabble to see if this is a career for you is volunteering. That's right. So, so how would one go about volunteering? Um, you would just go to that same uh, cmfkc.com, the contact page. And it's got Rhonda Lyons' information. She's the director of the Midwest Music Foundation and is our volunteer coordinator as well for the festival and has been for years. And she's very easy to work with. And uh, she would definitely try and find a job or, that's suited to your skills. Uh, just go to cmfkc.com. And that's got all the schedule, artists, uh, pop-up shops, every, everything we're doing this year. Great. Well, thank you for all that you're doing for the music community and the community at large. Oh, thank you. And thanks to the city for uh, supporting events like this that, that really do add to the fabric of our city. Our pleasure. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. My name is Erin Black and I've been a keeper here for just shy of nine years. I'm on Team Ruin Zori and so we care for chimpanzees, hippos, crocodiles, some birds, painted dogs, and baboons. I went to Northwest Missouri State University and I studied wildlife ecology and conservation. And with that, I learned a lot about animals in native Missouri. And then I interned here a lot to learn about exotic animals. What led you to become a zookeeper? And when did you find out that's what you wanted to do? I knew when I was about five or six years old, um, thanks to an episode of Reading Rainbow about manatees. Um, and from there, it just kind of grew. Different movies really actually kind of um, inspired me. Congo, silly movie, inspired me to learn about primates. And then Ghost in the Darkness inspired me for lions. And then from there, I just kind of learned more. 
My favorite part of my day is enrichment. I love making enrichment for our animals. I love training them. And everything I do has meaning when I work with my animals. It's training, it's bonding, challenging them so they're not bored. Kids everywhere love to draw with chalk on the sidewalk, even us big kids who are still young at heart. You can check out some serious sidewalk chalk art from hundreds of artists at the 10th Annual Kansas City Chalk and Walk Festival. It's September 9th and 10th at Crown Center. There you will also find some great food, hands-on activities, street performers, and live musicians. For more information, check out kcchalkandwalk.org. In recognition of the Labor Day holiday on September 4th, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed. Curbside trash and recycling will be picked up on the day after your regular trash day during that week. For example, residents whose regular trash day is on Monday will have their trash picked up on Tuesday, and residents whose regular trash day is on Friday will have their trash picked up on Saturday. Well, that does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel where you can see all of our great programs and view them on demand. I'm Chris Hernandez. Bye for now.